You're watching Hardcore Collective. The fear of reaching a point in your life where you're trying to make a decision. As cheesy as it sounds, you need to follow your heart. You need to not let your family or society tell you the way that your life should be mapped out. You can have as much fun with this life or you can suffer in silence. You always have the right to say no. You always have the right to refuse. Live life for yourself. Hi, my name is Josh, and I uh, play for Casey Jones. And uh, how long have you guys been around? Uh, we started in 2003, and we're ending now in 2012. We're on our uh, our final tour uh, in North America, and uh, so February 4th will be our very last show ever, and uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. How, how do you uh, personally feel about the hardcore scene? As a uh, as you guys have been a band that have been around for a long time, what's uh, your perspective on? Uh, how, um, how, how it's been changing. I mean, I think that it, it kind of, like everything, just kind of goes full circle, you know? Um, there's been times where I, I feel like um, it's been an absolute amazing experience and you can go across the nation and kids are very pumped on it and, and they're not, um, it's more of a positive vibe and then you can come back a couple years later and kids aren't so pumped on it and there's more of a little bit negative vibe. Um, but uh, I think, you know, as a whole, I, th I think, uh, you know, a big reason why punk rock and hardcore have, have lasted for so long is because at the end of the day, there's people that don't fit in maybe to normal society and, and they don't really, you know, they're like a little bit lost maybe and hopefully like through punk and hardcore and just music in general, they can get a little bit of... Uh, of, of relief from the outside world and, and be able to escape a little bit, and, you know, and come to a show and like be able just to release. So um, I think that that is one thing that's been consistent with punk rock and hardcore, um, regardless of whatever trends there are or flip floppiness, you know, from elitist, you know, anything like that. So um, you know, I think I think it's good. I, th I think that uh, punk rock and hardcore will. Uh, I think it's always going to last because of that. Because at the end of the day, there's just um, um, the the core of it is just <clears throat> is just about release. I think from from your problems in the outside world. What uh what originally got the band started, and what made you guys want to be a straight edge band? Um, we originally started the band. It was myself, my brother Caleb, who plays drums, and our first bass player, whose name was Josh, um, and. Uh, it was kind of like we were just sitting around and, and talking about how much we love punk rock and, and how at that time a lot of the current straight edge bands that we listened to didn't seem to be very active and also like at the time there wasn't very many straight edge bands I think were like just real like in your face about it and also like didn't have really like that punk rock feeling behind it so it was kind of like one of those things where it's like well we wanted to start like a punk hardcore band and and we wanted we wanted to be a part of something that like had some conviction that that stood for something because none of us had ever been in a band previously that was like that had a core value about the band and so um I mean it was really and you know on top of that we thought it would be fun and um, since we're all terrible musicians you know it's like the easiest shit to play in the you know all you gotta do is a couple, <laughs> couple of fucking power chords and and you're good to go. But um, yeah, so we started in 2003, and uh, and you know, it's it's never been a full time, it's never been a full time band or anything like that. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's been so fun is because we never took on that load of being like, we got to get this tour, you know, we have to put out this record, you know, we've got to make money or whatever, because it wasn't, it was never our our main focus in life. So that's it's been it's been a blast. And uh, personally for you, Josh, what was your uh, purpose in a uh, becoming straight edge um, when I was younger uh, you know just just being a, a young kid um, you know I experimented with stuff and and you know as well as, as my friends did and it just seemed like one of those things where everyone would would be getting you know intoxicated or, or whatever and uh, 
it just seemed like everyone was having a lot more fun than I was. And I just kind of felt like it just, it just felt a little strange to me. And it, and it felt, it was just foreign to me. And I guess I could just feel for myself that it just wasn't, I was like, yeah, I don't really need to do this. Cause you know, like I have just as good or if not more of a, you know, fun time without it. And um, I didn't know what, what straight edge was. Um, and, uh, you know, I listened to bands like Minor Threat and Gorilla Biscuits and stuff, but I didn't know that, like, Straight Edge was, like, this label, you know, that, that you <clears throat> put on yourself. And um, a friend of, like, one of my best friends, actually, him and I were talking about it one day, and we were, I was just kind of, like, venting to him about how I just felt kind of uncomfortable with it, and he told me he felt similar, and then I was, we were both like, yeah, so we're just not going to do that shit anymore, you know what I mean? Like, we'll still hang out with all our friends, we'll still go skate every single day, we'll still, you know, go to all the parties and stuff, but we just won't do it. And then, you know, shortly after that, we found out that, you know, that is what's called straight edge. So, it was never like, to me, I never felt like I became straight edge, it kind of just felt like straight edge is what I am. Kind of like how, you know, if someone's like, yeah, I just don't eat meat, you know, then they are called a vegetarian. You know, then there's people that decide they want to become a vegetarian and so they stop eating meat. You know, and I, and I feel like that, it's like that with a lot of people with straight edge as well. A lot of people are like, I'm going to become straight edge. And I mean, that's, that's cool and you know, whatever. But for me, it was one of those things where I, I just was that. That's that's what it was, and so that was just a description for me. I didn't become something. Something was, you know, was already what what I am. Um, so yeah. And then, shortly after that, like a lot of those same friends, you know, my, you know, like my good close group of friends, they just kept getting more and more out of out of control with it. And then, you know, by the time I, by the time I was 20, like five of them had died through drug related or alcohol related accidents and and it was you know mind blowing to see that because it was one of those things where I look back and and I and I'm thankful that that I followed that instinct inside of me that said you don't have to do this to have a good time and I still had a blast you know through through my younger years and still did real stupid shit and still got in a lot of trouble and um but but I you know obviously I'm very happy with with uh, my decision and uh can you tell us some of the uh, influences you guys had on uh, some of your previous albums and the album that uh, recently came out? Oh, uh, like musically? Yeah. Um, big influences for the band always have been Good Riddance and um, Trial. Um, you know, we listen to like a, a lot of like, you know, like 90s punk stuff. I and mean, we love Black Flag and Minor Threat and, and Operation Ivy. Like, my favorite band's Rancid. Um, but I think bands that like, had like a direct influence like when we're actually writing. I would say Good Riddance and Trial were probably like two of our, our biggest influences uh, collectively. Definitely. Um, what, uh, how do you feel personally about um, the band over the years and now that it's uh, coming to a close? I feel great about it. Um, I, th I think that uh, I, I'm really happy that we made our decision to do one final record and to kind of like plan our death um, instead of just being a band, we, we just didn't want to be one of those bands where we're just around and we play two or three times a year, you know? We just, we wanted to like have like a proper ending and kind of like, you know, give, <clears throat> give the people that have supported us throughout the years like one last chance to see us. So when we planned this tour, um, we tried to go to like everywhere that we had not been in the past as well as hit up some places that we've had, you know, like a lot of fun. Um, you know, a lot of good shows in the past. So, um, yeah, I, f I mean, I feel great about it. I look back and I don't think we really have any any regrets about the band. And uh, I think everyone's like very happy with the way that the uh, the band as a whole is has turned out. Definitely. And um, can you give us some uh, shout outs? To who? Anyone. Shout out to you. Um, <laughs> If you haven't heard uh, Boys No Good, check them out. They're a new pop punk band. It's our bass player's new band. Uh, really good. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> fucking fucking a. I right, just want to thank you for doing this interview, man. Because uh, we're never gonna see you guys around anymore. Yeah, so, after uh, this, we're all gonna have like a mass suicide. <laughs> so. All right, and for everyone who's watching, can you say you're watching Hardcore Collective? You're watching Hardcore Collective.